Welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. Part two of the GM 1.4 liter and the Subaru Trans. Let's get a clutch and flywheel figured out for this engine. The task at hand here is we got our modified Subaru Trans at the 1.4 liter LE2. Start off with a Subaru clutch disc here. It's a factory replacement disc, nothing fancy. That'll fit the splines of the Trans. Now this motor came out of an automatic, so you got the factory flex plate here. Doing a little research, these came with a dual mass flywheel in the Chevy Cruze. So I took a gamble on this Chevy Spark flywheel with a naturally aspirated 1.4, and it is not a single mass. It's a step face solid cast iron. Uh, I got the GM part number somewhere. I doubt it's 9186, but something like that. I ordered this straight from GM because you can't get it anywhere. These are so uncommon right now. Anyway, um, unlike all the other Ecotechs, which are typically a six bolt flywheel, some of them are eight bolt. These 1.4 liters are eight bolt. And to get the correct uh, ring gear diameter to engage with the starter, it looks to me that there's only like three flywheels on the market that will fit one is the 1.4 liter chevy cruise 2000 what is it 16 and up or 18 and up whatever has the le2 uh the chevy spark of similar years this does fit i tested it and then there's an opal in europe that also has a flywheel that i believe would fit i don't have easy access to those european parts though so holding this up looks good uh, my guesstimations were correct on that. I can tell you already that having this huge step here is probably not going to work considering that the Subaru clutch doesn't even fit down into the flywheel surface. So there's going to be a lot of machining going on here. Pretty well already decided I'm going to go with the Subaru clutch disc since obviously it fits the transmission and they're just robust and cheap. I mean, I think these are like 40 bucks for Chinese stock ones. And it's like an eight, eight and seven eighths clutch or so. Now, I did pull this random GM pressure plate out of my scrap pile. And this fits that pressure plate perfect. It's exactly the correct diameter for this. That would work for me. Now we move on to the flywheel though. That's the tricky part. So this is that Chevy Spark flywheel. The naturally aspirated 1.4. I confirm this does bolt up to the LE2 and the ring gear will work. However, it's got, you know, a pretty complicated system going on here. You got a step, another step, a boss, and then you get down to clutch friction area. And unfortunately that friction area is tiny. I will not get a full size clutch in there. I'm gonna machine this whole flywheel flat and pretty much just start like a, you know, start fresh here. It'll lighten her up and I think it'll work and it'll give me enough real estate to put the Subaru disc on here with a GM clutch. Now, unfortunately, my lathe here is pretty much a toy. Uh, I will not be able to do this work on the lathe. So I'm gonna put this on the mill, knock off 95% of the material and then we'll bring it back to the lathe for the finished passes. Quite a different looking flywheel from what we came from here. Now I start playing around with clutch covers. So we know we got this S10 one, fits the disc, the Subaru disc perfectly. But then when I layer on here, man, we are really tight. So essentially the bolt holes would be almost coming through the side of the flywheel. It's just too close. There's not enough meat here to use this pressure plate. So I'm digging through my piles. I come up with a, this is a, um, uh, what is it? 240 millimeter BMW pressure plate. Seam size friction surface, actually larger. And the holes are about the same problem. They're gonna come off the side of the flywheel. So, and I'm thinking, all right, what does a Subaru pressure plate look like. So I reached out to this guy, Kyle, he was scrapping one. So I went up and grabbed that from him before it hit the scrap pile. 
This is an OEM Subaru disc, or plate I mean. Disc obviously fits it. What I was excited to see is that this has a smaller circumference and bolt pattern, smaller diameter and bolt pattern. That actually looks like it's meant to go on there. So I'm like, wow, that is nice. You got plenty of meat. These holes are nice and inboard. It looks like, boom, that looks like what should have came on this flyway off from the factory. I was kind of thinking though, like what did the Chevy Cruze do? There's no way that thing's got this tiny little clutch. So when I look at pictures online, this is the GM picture of that flywheel. You can see it's dual mass and they actually step out past the ring gear diameter for the clutch mounting surface. So that's something I can't do on this single mass. I'm not willing to run a dual mass on this. So we're kind of looking like this. Now there's one fatal flaw here, however. I also got a Subaru flywheel to play with and I'm like, damn it, it's stepped. There's a pretty decent step right here, meaning that if I actually clamp this one down to a flat flywheel like we were talking about, these fingers are not going to be in the correct position. I'm probably going to run out of travel on the disc or on the plate. So that not ideal, not ideal at all. However, we have a solution to all of this. So we're in a unique position here where we have options with starters and directions with the face. So the Subaru transmission, the starter hangs over the transmission, where on the Chevy Cruze, the starter hangs over the block. So I have two unique starter mounting locations, which means I could also use a Subaru diameter ring gear. So then I'm like, well, why don't we just give the entire Subaru flywheel, disc, and pressure plate combo a try? I mean, I'd like to use this. This is very cheap and affordable. They're literally everywhere. And then I f saw something extremely interesting. So I said, oh, cool. The Subaru is already an eight bolt flywheel. I wonder if I could change that bolt pattern, bolt that thing right on to the Chevy Cruze motor. So I take a stock Chevy Cruze flex plate. I'm holding it over top. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? The freaking bolt pattern is the same. What are the chances of that? Some European GM motor and a bolt pattern Subaru has been using for 45 years are exactly the same. That's insane. Uh, so it is not exactly the Subaru bolt circle, but it is within uh, 0.09 millimeters, which is nothing. Especially when GM runs a little hole in their flywheel. And what is this? Okay, nine millimeter bolt, some super bastard bolt. All right, so we got that figured out. Let's move on. So that's pretty cool that I can put the flywheel on the input shaft with the factory pilot bearing and determine my spacing here. So what's really like nice about this Subaru stuff is it looks like their crankshaft is probably recessed into the block a fair bit because this is where it would ride. And I've got almost full ring gear exposure around the bell housing here. Just keep in mind, I'm gonna have to build a thick aluminum adapter to bolt this to that. And I was worried that I'd have to space the flywheel way off the back of the crank to get it into the bell housing and all that. And it looks like that will not be the case. So that is super cool. I'm gonna take some measurements off of this and then take some measurements off the engine and see how thick this adapter plate needs to be. All right, banged out some little kid drawings here. Essentially pulled the dimensions from crank face to bell housing flange, pilot, uh, pilot shoulder to bell housing flange, pilot shoulder to crank face, pilot shoulder diameter. And then over here, my flywheel to crankshaft interface to the bell housing face, as well as the dimensions for how deep the pilot bushing or bearing will be. So at this point, I have everything I need with that. It's time to machine the Subaru flywheel to fit the LE2 crankshaft. This is a pretty cool piece on the Subarus. Just like a 
pilot bearing retainer that also adds, I guess, you know, some clamping force to the flywheel. The flywheel is actually very skinny in here. Not a whole lot to grab on. So, my thoughts are, even if I don't use this, I still need to use this. I'm gonna have to bore this out and use this just to add, just to give that factory, uh, you know, Subaru strength back to the flywheel. All right, we're back on the mill. Subaru flywheel upside down, squared to the table, mounted, and we are sweeped in spot on center of the bore. So now we are going to bore this out to 40.00 millimeters. Looks like we overshot by a one hundredth of a millimeter, which is nothing. It's a joke. I said I was going to hit 40.00. I did not, but uh, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm nervous here, because it's math. Math is... Oh, yeah. So I have been misled, and I don't want to mislead you all. I measured, when I measured these flywheels on the mill, I picked two bolts and I went between them. And I assumed that this is a symmetrical eight bolt pattern. You know what they say about assuming. So if you look in here, you can see that this hole, spot on. This one, not spot on. It'll still take a bolt because the hole is so oversized. But there's another one up here that's the same way. And I don't know if the Subaru is non-symmetrical eight bolt or is it this GM motor that's that way. I don't really care because it still fits and everything works. Just uh, wanted to be transparent with that, that that was discovered that that is slightly off and it's on two bolts. And it's like, why would you do that? And then I'm thinking, is there some type of external balancing required on this motor and they only want the flywheel to fit one way? Maybe? But the bolt holes are even bigger on the GM flywheel than they are on the Subaru ones. You have even more play on this one. So I don't know what the deal is with that. If you guys got any ideas, let me know in the comments. That's a little strange to me. If I All right, I couldn't quit without knowing. So it is the GM side that has the asymmetrical eight bolt pattern. Don't know why there's no uh, features on the flex plate or the flywheel that would say, hey, it has to go on this way. It will fit other ways um, with these little rubber things taken out. These are like, I thought they were to hold the bolt in when you're assembling it like on an assembly line. The automatic flex plate does not have those and has much tighter holes. The automatic flex plate may not fit numerous ways. Uh, the stick shift one will, and the Subaru one fits as well. So I don't know what their intent with this was, but it didn't stop us here. Pilot bearing comes right out. Let's get this thing modified to fit the GM crankshaft. All right, so we're squared up in the chuck. We're faced up this way. So now I can face this lip off and then we're gonna put the same 40 millimeter bore that we did in the flywheel into the backside of this to center it on the crank hub. This turned out very slick. Put the uh, factory bearing back in, and then we've got our 40 millimeter counter bore on the back here, so we can then counter the or pilot this on the GM crankshaft. Everything will be perfectly centered. That puts our center of our input shaft 
perfectly centered to the center of the crankshaft, which is what we want. So just like the Subaru, that bolts back together, except we've got a GM size 40 millimeter counter bore in here. Now we're gonna try these longer bolts that GM provided me with the Chevy. We're gonna use the GM manual bolts that came with uh, the Chevy Spark flywheel that I bought. They're longer than the automatic ones. These are an M9 bolt. It's an Opal design from Europe. Um, we don't use a lot of M9 hardware here. You really don't use a lot of M9 hardware anywhere in the world, but Opal has used it for flywheel bolts. For some reason, you're ever dumb enough to do this kind of swap and you need some of these M9 flywheel bolts. It's GM part number 11546513. So the more I research this, this is an Opal B14 FXT or something is what this motor actually is before GM uh, you know, brought it to the US and called it the, G, the, you know, the Chevy LE2. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap up this episode here. This is the end of part two. I am really excited that I came up with the solution of running a Subaru flywheel on this GM LE2. I think it solves a lot of my concerns and uh, I guess worries that I had. So with this, I mean, these flywheels are cheap as hell. They're like 65 bucks on Rock Auto. The clutch parts are super cheap and plentiful. And by using a factory pilot bearing in the factory position, this pilot bearing to clutch face relationship is the same as it would be in any Subaru. So that means my clutch fork will be correct. The angle of that will be correct. The throw up bearings correct. The clutch hydraulics, are, uh, clutch hydraulics are correct. It's just like by using this assembly, an entire pile of Subaru parts on the end of the crankshaft, I just eliminate a whole bunch of engineering and other BS to deal with. So I'm extremely thankful that this bolt pattern works. Um, even if it didn't, I would have drilled, made an adapter or whatever, but I'm just really excited about how all this turned out. So next episode, I'm going to be building the adapter plate to adapt from the GM bell housing pattern to the Subaru bell housing pattern. I think that's going to be the most challenging part of this combination, but we'll see. We'll get there when we get there. I got a lot of designing to do on that one. I'm going to have to reach out to someone to do some work for me on that one. But anyway, thanks for watching Spank Grants Garage. Stay tuned. I got a lot more of this stuff coming and I'm super excited to get this drivetrain into the buggy. I think it's going to be absolutely incredible and it's going to sound super cool. So stay tuned. See you next time. Spank Grants Garage.